What is up YouTube? Welcome to Kona episode 7 of my Let's Play. We are going to be uploading this on time and actually early. We're going to be uploading this on July 4th. I'm actually recording this the day before so that I can upload this ahead of time. Kind of try out that YouTube, um, that new, not really a new f feature, but a feature of just uploading ahead of time, having it scheduled and see if it uploads. I've been, you know, as you know, very behind on uploads. And, uh, well, I guess the timing of uploads. Press A. I'm not playing this on a controller. Although, I, dang, I could do that. And I'm considering it now. And actually, guys, before I start this episode, I wanted to give you guys a shout out to a wonderful non-denomination church that uploads their sermons online. Actually, that they're, they're a church that I go to locally, and they're wonderful. They're just wonderful... I love going going there in person and watching, but they do have their sermons online, and I totally encourage you to check out their sermons. Even if you're not Christian, you're not religious at all, you don't really have a strong belief on something, I still suggest that you drop by and just check it out. And same with my channel. Even even if you're not like religious or anything like that, I still welcome you to my channel. Even though I'm Christian, I I am not intolerant to any religion or any affiliation of any kind, really. So... I hope this doesn't make you uncomfortable that I am shouting out this this wonderful church. And if for those who are interested, please check out my description. I'm leaving uh, a link to their website, and then you can check them out there. If you're not interested, totally cool. But I I have to I have to give a shout out to them because they're they're wonderful. I love their sermons. Really great people. But anywho, I know for some of you, talking about religion and, and beliefs and stuff like that is really uncomfortable. So this is the last this is the last of the the shout outs I have for this episode for you. And I won't be bringing it up again. So uh, if you're interested, check out the description. If not, totally cool. I'm done. Now to the game. Press A. Do I have to press it on my keyboard or? Oh, well, it works. Oh, that sensitivity. That sweet, sweet sensitivity. What is up? I'm sorry, I'm still trying to, you know, get my bearings. So, what just happened? In the last episode, we, well, we saw the demise of some, of two uh, locals here in town. We saw them get frozen to death. And we also got to get into the, the truck and find out what's in this safe back here. Uh, which are supposed to be, you know, incriminating evidence of Hamilton's mines, I think. But... It didn't seem like anything conclusive, and it really just sounded like commentary. Whoa, when under stress, Carl is less... Why would I be under stress? Why? <laughs> what reason do I have to be stressed? Is it the fact that there's uh, people frozen alive? Is it... Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's these creaky floor. This is the uh, English. It's... Oh, it's so difficult. All right. So this was one of the places I wanted to check out. There's also another place that we didn't get to check out last episode. Speaking of episodes, I'm going to try to keep this one to a minimum. Uh, keep it short. Why can't I... Oh. I guess Q does that too. But why can I not... No, that's not it. Oh, it's I. That's right. I. Equipment. And I wanted to see my map. Which is probably M. I don't know why I didn't. Excuse me, excuse me. There we go. Where are we now? We're there. And then there's also two houses that I passed on the left side. So we're on the right hand side. On the left hand side, see those two houses? I don't think we I don't think we've been there. So I do want to check those out real fast. But we'll know if I'm mistaken real fast. Also part of obviously part of the reason why I'm uploading this is the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July for those who celebrate it. Okay, can I get out my map? Nope, but I can definitely get out of the... Come on. Carl. Carl. You need to work with me, bud. Wait, does Tab do that too? Because I thought Tab would take out my map. Nope, Tab does that. Okay. Lesson learned. I thought it was Q. It's not. <laughs> Maybe it's M? M for map. M for map? Yeah, there we go. Whoa, sensitivity. Oh, so it looks like I passed it, but I, I'm going to go to the first house then. 
Go to the first. Is it on the right? I think it's on the right. Yeah, it's on the right. It shouldn't be far. Oh, come on, Bessie. My car is having troubles. It's a truck. Come on, man. Wait. Is there a driveway? Oh, it looks like it. Oh, it looks like we're in the right area if, we're, if the game's loading. This is exciting stuff. I, I love playing this game. Love being an investigator, a detective. Oh, stop! Stop the car! <laughs> Why won't you stop? Okay, Roy's house. Roy's is Royce. I, I'm not sure. This, you know, it's French Canadian, Canadian, so it's gonna be really hard for me to pronounce these. And I'm quite ignorant of pronunciations, so I'm sorry for that. Alrighty, so let's go around the house first, just to give it a quick, you know, quick look. Ooh, so we got probably wolf prints. Uh, possible wolf print sighting. You know, classic French-Canadian woods. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me. No, 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 wait, don't leave. Don't leave. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. Okay. Carl, I know it's snow. But you just gotta push through it. There we go. Okay. Very deep snow. Those are my footprints. It doesn't look like someone has left or came here in a while. Nice rocking chair. <gasps> and a note. Hello. Oh. Note from Jean... Jean Roy. We fled. It was getting too dangerous. More people live in North Manistan. It will be safer there. Roy... R Roy. Yeah, Roy. Good enough. I'm not great at reading either, as you guys probably know from last episode. Okay. It was a classic Canadian house, except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. Hmm. Okay, nothing in there. Can we turn on the light? Is there not a light switch? Oh, here we go. There we go. Nice. So let's get the party started. There we go. Now it's a party. Fourth of July party. Oh, what is that? Can I crouch? There we go. Oh, it's matches. Yeah. Seven. Wow. Heck yeah. Open. Open sesame. There we go. No, nothing. Oh, anything. <gasps> Hello. Can I not search? I guess the game doesn't think it's important enough to search. That's cool. A steak is there a steak in? No, that's okay. But we're gonna need we're gonna need to work on that, guys. I need to work on that. Get a nice oh. Inspect. Cookie jars are always too high to reach. Uh, sadly true. Do I need a ladder? Is there something in there that I need? Hello. The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Perhaps some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. Freedom? Nah, only in America. <laughs> Carl figured right away that the man totally kidding. Been some kind of wildlife officer. Oh, okay. And he's... they're apparently missing. They're not here. All their stuff is here, you know, like... Oh, hello. What is that? Painkillers, yummy. Okay. Can I... Yeah, it doesn't look like anything worth worth investigating. Although it looks like everything's here. Like, there's no reason to leave. At all. But they said it was too dangerous. Oh, can I turn it on? Can I... There we go. Oh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> nice. What is this? Novel page three. The fantasy. The first time he met Beatrice, however, she unexpected wait, yeah, unexpectedly revealed her troubled origin to Matthew. She was adopted at the age of four and recalled her former life still gave her a hard time. Recalling. She played the piano in so graceful a manner that people often thought she may be the natural offspring of a musical virtuoso. She always cried before falling asleep, torn from the inside by a dreadful pain she couldn't explain. 
She confided to him so profoundly that Matthew couldn't get enough, coming back every night to learn every single thing of what would come out of that delicate mouth after pulling one last breath out of it. That's really descriptive. Thanks for that. Okay. Every night he reflected on what the death of Beatrice would mean in terms of losses to humanity's common heritage, be it the sound of her sobbing or of her piano melodies, the compulsive tapping of her long index finger on her temple when she harbored dark thoughts or any other little thing. It didn't matter. Everything would indiscriminately vanish. Everything. All these thoughts made for some blissful slumber indeed. Then days became weeks, and before he knew it, it was Matthew's turn to throw his secrets at her, his hopes, his cries of despair, as if throwing coins in a wishing well. She'll be dead by the end of the month, he promised himself. Wow. Okay. Well, that's really dark. Really, really dark. Thanks for that game. And I'm sorry about that, friends. <laughs> oh, no. There's a fourth. No. I'm not sure I want to read it. This is not going to be good. The two lovebirds were still going at it seven months later, though confiding fears and desires alike near the fireplace several days a week. The populace took notice, and wounding words eventually found their ways to Matthew's ear, prompting him to take action to prove his gentle manner, ma gentlemanship. He had to ask Beatrice's hand in marriage. He would have more than enough time to kill. What? Time to kill her later? Oh my gosh. That's awful. Today, when Matthew stares at the motionless ceiling, just like he did 20 years ago, he still wonders what he would be removing from existence by... S oh, yeah, I'm not reading that. Uh, yeah, okay, so that was awful. Yeah, I'm not reading that aloud. I'm sorry. Not worth it. Oh, my gosh. So, I don't know what the fantasy is but it's pretty twisted it looks like well i don't know because there wasn't somebody named matthew living here it might just be a novel that someone's reading on their free time okay it looked like i could grab something there but now okay well i i give i'm not gonna not gonna mess the oh it's on this side inspect well hold on <laughs> canopoly <laughs> wow nice you win if you pass go. Oh, nice. All manners of clothing were gone, as if the Rois drove out of town with their closet in tow. Rose? I can't print. I'm not going to. Is that a knife? No, that's the drawer lid. Okay. But is that, does that supposed to say something about this game? If I pass go, I win in this game? Hmm? Interesting. I don't know. Ah, cigarettes. Nice. I can't find a single Canadian home without one. Without a pack of cigarettes. Ah, uh, page two. Yeah, I'm not going to read it. I'm very sorry. But it's just twisted and weird. And it's about some dude killing his wife. <laughs> so, yeah, not into it. Um, Yeah, I'll take the locks. Why not? And I think this is all I can... Simone de Beauvoir. Claude Lévi-Strauss. Whoa. Anna Arendt. Roland Barthes. Your Carl was surprised by the literature filling this liberal-leaning bookcase. Could there really be intellectuals dwelling in this far-off land? <laughs> He's flexing. Oh, is this supposed to... Oh, this is probably page one. Yeah, it's page one. Uh... Wow, yeah. Matthew had not... Wait, had yet to add murder to his curriculum. He was fond of new experiences, especially the most thrilling ones. And taking the life... Okay. Yep, we're done. We are done. Oh. Nope. So, some murderous dude. Well, it's a fantasy. It's not a real thing, but it is something that the people who lived here were reading. I don't th I don't think it was... Yeah, I don't think it was anyone living here. Well, that's cool. We found the home of, well, an average Canadian. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, although it is kind of odd that only... Let's see... There was a bedroom. That was a bedroom. This is like an office slash living room sort of deal. And oh, and there's a gun rack here, empty. Not a single weapon was left. 
all of them were gone. Ah, so whoever lived here was panicked. They they were they were convinced they were in danger, so they grabbed their weapons. Although it's kind of weird to have a rack if you only have one gun. So I assume they took multiple people took weapons maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but they took their weapons and they took their clothes and they left. They didn't take a single they didn't take any food it looks like because their refrigerator is totally full. Yeah, it doesn't look like they took anything. Kona Cola, nice. I like that. <laughs> and there's nothing, there shouldn't, I don't think so. Oh, I can fill a bottle? Oh, I don't have a bottle. They didn't take any silverware. Okay, stop it. There we go. Nor any, anything. They didn't take anything with them. Except their clothes and their weapons. Which is kind of what the, oh, what the, uh, what the note was telling us. Very interesting. Hmm. I think that's everything. I think I, I got to look at everything. Actually, I'm going to check the bathroom one more time because the drawers are in my way before. Oh, no, it's just the game. It's just the game. I can't actually even move anywhere else in there. Wait. Oh, I thought I said I could do something. But I don't even know these people. You know, let's see what the what the journal says. The crash, no. No. Wait a minute. Aha! There is something. Danger drives people away from their hamlet. The Royce are no exception, like this note left behind suggests. Everybody is running, but not all of them find a way out. A car was abandoned before a road that caved in. Hmm. What happened to the passengers? I have no idea. So is that the story? We're just getting surround. We're getting caved in by an enormous ice wall. And not every. Some people saw the signs, though. I don't know how they saw the signs. And how I didn't. When I came in here, I I got in a car crash. The next thing I know, it's winter. So maybe that car that that made me crash was somebody trying to flee the scene, seeing that this ice wall was coming in. Yeah, see a strange wall of ice is growing fast, trapping us. What's one more weird phenomena around here? It seems like the four glowing ghostly silhouettes have something to do with all of this. Yeah, so I don't know. It's the busy season for wood chopping, so why is the place empty? Strange, very strange. Hmm, indubitably. My client is dead, no kidding. Wait. No, that was there before. That was there before, too. Further north. No, I read that. The hunt. Okay. Oh, so Wilfred Roy, I remember him now. He was one of the people that was, he's probably one of the people at the ice wall. He's the guy that, um, that drove away with the, with the blue, I don't know how to say that name. The, the Blyce, the blue family. Wilfred is in charge of maintaining law and order in the forest surrounding the Manistan region. He is a gamekeeper and makes him the only authority figure for several miles around. Chib Chibogama Polis I don't know how to I'm sorry, I don't know how to say these words. Police officers must not come to this village often. The day before I arrived, he saw something that convinced him to flee. Such bravery coming from a gamekeeper. He leaded yeah, he laid it to Manistan Nord with his wife. While escaping, the Royce took a detour to see the Bleu family. From there, Wilfred and Alexander went out looking for Giles Le Champ. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how to say these names. The threat must have been huge for him to go through all that trouble. Whatever they were scared of, their escape got complicated. Looks like they went through the forest. Yeah. And then they disappeared. So I don't know. Oh! Jin Roy. I'm not sure if that's how you say that. 
I got my hands on a little piece of literature authored by Jean Roy. Oh, so she wrote it. Okay. Confined to the far north, she left her worries Im imagine. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't talk. <laughs> confined, confined to the far north, she left her worried, worrying imagination running. Run? What? I can't. She left her worrying imagination run? So it's not just me. It's that that's worded interestingly. It's not just me. Okay. How can she live a normal life while writing such things? Hmm. The day before I arrived, she and her husband left their home in a hurry. I still don't know why. While driving, they stopped by the Bleu family, and from there, the woman continued their escape to the north in Louise Bleu's car? Ladies only. Okay. Interesting. So she actually wrote those. Odd. Wait. What? I thought this... Oh, that's Martin. Oh, okay. I was thinking... Yeah, I was thinking of someone else. So, does it say anything about him more than we already have read? I don't think so. And there's no one else. Yeah, there's nothing else. Okay. So, it looks like my suspicions were correct. And I'm actually going to take a picture of the house. Oh, okay. I see how it is. Well, I'm going to at least take a picture of this because, yeah. That is strange. That is strange. Keep picture. But I think we're starting to figure out why all of this is happening. And it's all coming together now. And one more. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's good enough. Keep it. Nice. Okay. Reload. Reload. <laughs> there we go. All right, I think that's exactly where I'm going to leave it today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for joining me. I think we learned a lot today. We learned a lot about Jean Roy and and her husband, maybe? Question mark? Wilfred Roy, who I guess drove to pick up the bleu from this oncoming crisis? I'm, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. We need to find out what the ice wall is, and we need to find out what exactly they were running from. Maybe the monster that was described in the hunt's log or the hunter's log, or maybe this ice wall that we keep bringing up. So hopefully in the next episode, we'll come to a better understanding of what's going on. And uh, I actually, I plan on uploading, or sorry, recording right after this. So I might actually be able to upload two videos on the 4th of July. But anywho, Thank you guys so much for stopping by, and I hope you have a fantastic 4th of July. See ya!